G'day. A few videos ago I, I put out a, a, a showing the making of a, um, a six position carriage stop uh, and that involved mainly turning. There was a little bit of milling in there but it was mainly turning. Uh, and then there's a second video showing the fabrication of the bracket and that one was mainly milling. Today I've put it all together. I've uh, made up a, a, a bracket and that's actually sheet metal uh, but managed to get that so it uh, bolts on to the to the stop. I've put the detent in so that clicks nicely and uh, even tried it on the lathe and it all lines up which is a, a good thing. There's still a little bit of work to do, there's a bit of painting to be done. I don't think I'll subject you to a, a video of watching paint dry but if you want one please comment. Um, but uh, yeah I've got I've now got a, a six position stop for my uh, lathe carriage. One of the first things I need to do is um, work out where that is in position to this. This is the end of the indicator. Uh, it does keep coming undone to me so I need to make sure that's firm. I know that that's 4.8 in diameter so this way it's just that measurement there plus 2.4 and this way it's that measurement there plus 2.4 and that'll give me from that corner basically to that center line. Now I need to do the same thing for the um, stop. Measuring this is a little trickier but I've worked out that these two have got to be horizontal for the um, the plunger of the, the dial to be able to get to them and that's simply because of the, the geometry of the rest of the lathe. So I've put these two vertical which means this these two are horizontal uh, and then I've got a a square here against that edge and I, I, I can measure from the, the center line of that screw or rather the edge of that screw to there uh, and that's an M6 screw and I can also measure from the, the surface here up to the screw and, uh, and work out my measurement that way. Whiteboard time and it's mainly to show that the, um, the, the problems I have. I've measured up my uh, rotational stop and I get from the bottom surface there to that hole I get 20 0.4 from there to there I get 27.4. If I measure where this is to the to the um, uh, center of the plunger I get 13.6 and 31.8. Now when I put those all together, sorry this diagram here, don't look at that from for a moment, I get 2.4 between the the back surface of that and the surface of that. Now when I put those all together uh, there I get where are we? 2.4 millimeters from that surface there to that surface there and from the top surface of that down to there I get 34.5. Um, that dimension is a little bit of a worry because that's not all that tight, I, uh, not all that um, loose. I was going to uh, try and do something, uh, you know, around about 10 millimeters thick and obviously I can't fit that in there. Worst news is when we come down here. This one's almost an afterthought but I thought I'd better check out what sort of clearance I've got here and when I put this against the, the body of the lathe and measure to the, the center point of the plunger, I've only got two millimeters between this surface and the, the casting. Here I've only got 5.3. So anything I do is going to have to be basically less than five thick here and almost nothing there. Which means several of the plans I had before I came out here are now gone. Right, well this shows the advantage of using a casting sometimes. This is the uh, uh, micrometer holder and as you can see it's got this curve in here and that's for a casting that's quite easy. In fact you want that because it, it means you don't have a stress razor sitting in there. But what it also means is you can shape this to avoid other bits and pieces. Now the problem I have is here. If that's my gauge there, sitting on the centre line, um, you can't see it there. But when that's all there, that's there's only about two millimetres clearance between the two. And so I, I can't come out much more than that till about there. Then I can ramp out a little bit. This black line here represents the curve of the of the corner of the lathe and to get this on I can't be any more than that. So what I need is basically a curved piece. 
If you look at that, being a casting, it's got a radius on it, and that complicates things for me. I was originally going to use just a bit of flat and put a bend in it, but then that would look pretty awful out of keeping with the lathe. So what I've done is this. I've got a bit of bar, and I've put a bit of a radius on it. I tried it out on a scrap of material, and I can work that down there with my hammer. So what I'm doing now is I've got this curved section, and I'm just working that round with a hammer to try and get that profile. I'm doing the top edge first, and then I'm going to work on the bottom edge. And what I'm hoping to do is get two pieces of, of sheet metal, basically, that I can then weld together like so, and get a decent thickness of section so it's stiff, while not adding weight, and, and looking a little bit like the original here. So, uh, tall order, but uh, I think we can do it. Here are my two bits of metal put together. This one here was basically pretty straightforward. It's just a matter of bending over these, these sides here. Uh, this one here was bending that way and then stretching the metal around here. But I've managed to do that with the hammer and the, and the, the stake that I, uh, I made up. What I'm going to do now is just sort of lie that on top of here and, and cut out the fill-in pieces. What I'm going to do now is lie this on top of this piece of sheet and, and cut out the fill-in pieces. And then I'll, I'll weld those in there, uh, dress that back, and I'll, that, that should give me something that's looking, you know, similar to that bit of casting. What's going to happen up here, I'm not quite sure. I think I'll be cutting that away uh, and maybe even putting a solid piece in there, which I can then uh, recess a little bit into the side of that. I sh uh, yes, it'll be in the, into there, so that that's, you know, that's coming along like that sort of thing. But uh, we'll see how we go with that. Uh, first of all, I want to get this bit done and uh, uh, dressed back, cut to match the, uh, the block. This is my first side done. Um, for those of you wondering about these really sharp corners, yes, that's more wishful thinking than actual skill, uh, as you can possibly see in there. Uh, I had to, to come along and basically fill that hole, uh, the, the, the fine bit burnt out. I've now got the same thing to do with this one. Uh, this one's on the top, and I've got to just trim that to, to, to suit. When I've got that done, I'll have something that basically looks like this. Uh, I think I'll then attach that to the block and just see how everything sits and where it has to go and, and, and go from there. I've taken my tubular section here and uh, welded it onto the block. Um, that took a little bit of doing because of the, the thickness difference between this one and that one. Uh, quite a bit more heat was required, but that's okay. Um, I still got a little bit of welding to do and touch up, touch up a few spots. I want to fill it that to make that look a bit more like a cast part. But as you can see, that's, that's looking you know, pretty well like. Maybe not quite, but um, it's getting there. So. Uh, all I have to do now is work out how I'm going to, uh, oh, sorry, where I'm going to be putting this. I know how I'm going to be attaching it. I'll have to, um, uh, you know, put some screws in there, drill and tap and all that sort of thing. Um, but uh, I think the, the, the current thinking I have is that I'll, I'll put a piece of solid in here, uh, cut that off, put a bit of solid in, and that way I can shape that down to the, to the sort of the, the five millimeters or so, which is about all the, the room I've got in there to uh, to put that piece on. What have I done? Well, I worked out where I was on this and, and cut that out and then cut the back off, shaped a bit of flat bar to suit, and I've welded that in. Now I'm going to dress that back. Um, what that should do, I'm hoping, is give me a surface that I can then bolt the, um, the, the six station stop onto and uh, uh, you know, I'll need to rebate that a little bit, but it'll position just where I want it to be positioned. So, um, you know, reasonably pleased with that. Once I've done that, it's a matter of just sort of cleaning things up and putting a, a coat of paint on, I think. So as I wind the handle out, you can see I'm getting very little movement there. It's around about 0.05 of a millimetre now. I only need the front. I need to I only need to be about up to there. So. So as far as I'm concerned, that's fine. Uh, that's giving me a surface that's just off there. I can put my uh, dial on there and measure how far and then work out what I have to do to rebate into that. Uh, also clean that up a little bit. Here's a bit of a bodge that I use, which is probably worth passing on. I need to put these four holes onto here. So what I've done is I've, I've marked out where I want the holes. I've drilled them out to tapping drill size. 
I then spot it using one of those as a guide I've spotted through, tapped that to my finish size, taken that out the clearance hole, and now I'm going to bolt those together. And what that does, if I got the right size key there, no, which one is it? That one. So what that's done is that's secured that in position so I can now spot through using those holes as a guide and get my tapping drill holes in the right spot. I can then drill the ones in the steel piece out to clearance. I can put the countersinks in, I can tap in here and I know that that hole pattern is going to be basically where I want it. So just a little bit of a bodge. Um, you know, people can do it with transfer punches or they can mark out coordinates or all that sort of stuff, but this is just uh, a, a quick and dirty way of doing some of these things. So I've bolted the, or screwed the, the, um, the bracket onto the, the surround, uh, and I'll just slip that on there like so, and you can see what that, that curve on the back is, is there to do. Now, here's the moment of truth. I'll put that in there. Um, I've got it separated because I haven't bolted it back together again. But if that's correct, when I line this up, turn that round, I should get that going straight in there. And as you can see, that's pretty much spot on. So all those measurements did pay off. Um, so now I need to put some flats on here to put some markings on. Uh, I need to get the detent positions all sorted, but uh, you know, this is, this is pretty much all over bar the shouting now. It turns out that the flats for the numbers of, of station um, were basically right above the screw hole. And so rather than setting this up and indexing and all that sort of fun stuff, I've used the, um, the screws that would go in there to act as support. So I've got two of those there, which means that this surface here is parallel with this one and so I've just come along and, and, and put that flat on there. Uh, just a, another way you can save yourself a little bit of time um, doing strange setups when you uh, don't need to. Marking out the uh, the detent positions is another one of those things where you can either set it up in a, a rotary table or a dividing head and do all sorts of fancy stuff or you can cheat a little bit. Uh, I've chosen to cheat a little bit here. The distance from here to here is dictated by the housing and so I can just run around with the odd leg calipers and, and get that. The distance between those points, those six points if you think about it represent a hexagon and so the distance across the corners of the hexagon which is the diameter of this part here half of that because it's an equilateral triangle is going to be the distance between those two points. So I've set the dividers up for that. I had to do a couple of, of, of rounds but uh, I've managed to get it so that it goes round in six equal spots and so I'm just going to go along with a, um, a spotting drill. Uh, all I need there is a bit of a, a, an indentation sort of like the cone of the, um, the drill and that should give me enough uh, engagement for the ball to, to click in and, and act as a bit of a detent. Here it all is, uh, barring a little bit of paint and some engraving. Uh, the detent is just the 135 degree cone of a 5mm drill and all I've done is taken it to basically the cone uh, and that just gives it enough there with the ball and the spring to you know click round. Everything lines up which is really nice. One thing with this is that I can't have much more than about 25mm uh, separating these two stops so if, I might have to go to um, only three stops if uh, you know I've got some really deep parts to do. Uh, this will slide right back, this will slide right back to here so I can use it you know relatively close to the chuck or I can slide it along there. So that's it, that's my, uh, my six stop Thanks for watching and uh, we'll see you for the next one.